here. Next time you see me, I might have a tattoo across my chest, creating problems for people in power. My day job, my night job, I do it while sleeping. I do it while breathing because I'm black. <laughs> um, hey y'all, welcome back to Tita Takes where we recognize and celebrate written and visual creative arts written for and by people of color. Creative works by people of color are notoriously under-recognized and under-reviewed by the entertainment and literary industries. So we created our own platform to talk about, to celebrate, review, analyze, and really enjoy these incredible works of art. If you haven't subscribed yet, this is your reminder. Go ahead and press the subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you can be notified whenever I post a new video. This video is the second book club pick for January and it is Thick and other essays written by Tressy McMillan Cotton. Thick is written by, as I said, Tressy McMillan Cotton. So, to give you a little bit of background about her, she is a MacArthur Fellow, okay, a New York Times contributing opinion writer. She is the author of several books, including the National Book Award finalists thick and other essays which is the book that we're here to talk about audiences and institutions have lauded her incisive analysis and impact to give you a brief synopsis I'm actually gonna borrow an excerpt from one of my favorite current thought leaders right now her name is Roxanne Gay I don't know if you've heard of her but Roxanne Gay says regarding thick this transgressive, provocative, and brilliant collection cements Macmillan's Cotton's position as a public thinker capable of shedding new light on what the personal essay can do. She turns her chosen form into a showcase for her critical dexterity, investigating everything from Saturday Night Live, LinkedIn, and Barbecue Becky to sexual violence, infant mortality, and Trump rallies. And My absolute favorite thing about Thick is how original the content is and how original her voice is. Kottam is such an independent thinker. I am so attracted to the way that Kottam has completely unwired her way of thinking. She has unwired her brain from the brainwash of public school and the status quo and the media and the way the media controls everything and what we ingest and how we think and how it controls us. She has completely unwired her brain and she's written a collection of essays that sheds new and fresh light into things that we would think are are commonplace you know like beauty for example um, I think there are many people out there who think that you know beauty is scientific beauty is symmetry and such but beauty is an industry and beauty is oppressive and and I didn't say impressive I said oppressive beauty the beauty industry is oppressive and violently white aggressively white and eurocentric and she really dives in to these different subjects and sheds new and fresh perspective and that is 100 percent the number one thing that i enjoyed about this book like i like the new take i appreciate the new take i find that i'm really like i said just attracted to people who look at things differently and shed new light and are able to speak to things not as you know recite not not by reciting what they've heard or what they learned when they were young and these kind of more binary thought patterns but to look at things as complicated as they are and um she does a fantastic job of doing that is this an easy read no, this is not an easy read. Tracy is an academic. She's a professor. She is a writer. And so she, it, she, the book reads like so, you know, like 
the book reads like she's an academic and i'm not you know i had to re i had to reread a few pages i'm not gonna lie like she, she she lost me a few times she lost me in there and i don't say that to turn you off from reading the book i say that as a warning because uh not as a warning as a friendly heads up i should say the thick is thick with vocabulary okay not sat like phd vocabulary um fyi you will feel dumb reading this book but it's okay because we read to make ourselves smarter do we not do you not because i do it doesn't matter it doesn't matter i'm not even gonna judge you i'm not gonna judge you anyways moving on Anyways, I'm too excited to share this thesis with you. Tattoo this on my body, okay? Let me compose myself. Cotton's purpose in life is to create powerful stories that create problems for people in power. I'm gonna say it again, I'm gonna say it again. Did you, did you, you didn't catch it, let me say it again. Cotton's purpose, her life's work is to write powerful stories that create problems for the people in power. Mama's not playing nice. Mama does not play nice. Here are a few quotes so you can get a better idea. So you get a better idea of like Katim and her writing and her perspective and her voice. This, these are excerpts from the book. Quote, the things we touch and smell and see and experience through our senses are how stories become powerful. But I have never wanted to only tell powerful, evocative stories. I have wanted to tell evocative stories that become a problem for power. For that, I draw upon data and research. So by arming herself with data and research, call back call back to how the word is passed video i'll post that i don't know which way he armed himself with data and research and by reading it i armed myself with data and research and mcmillan katam is saying that she wants to be a problem for people in power but through data and research and writing and i can't think of a better way to dedicate your life to doing something but i'm gonna keep going with the quotes quote to know your whites is to be intimate with some white persons but to critically withhold faith in white people categorically unquote <laughs> do you see where we're going okay quote i hate small talk it is small small is for teacups and occasionally for tiny houses too much small talk is how a country is given to sociopaths who thrive on shallow chatter to distract their emotional sleight of hand talk should be meaningful or kept to a minimum Tracy girl Tracy girl quote i am living in the most opportune time in black history in the united states and that means still that I will die younger, live poor, risk more exposure to police violence, and be punished by social policy for being a black woman in ways that aren't true for almost any other group in this nation. That that is the best it has ever been to be black in America, and it is still that statistically bad at the macro level. Ooh, this might be my favorite quote. When we perform some existential service to men, to capital, to political power, to white women, and even to other people of color who are marginally closer to white than they are to black, then we are super women. We are fulfilling our purpose in the natural order of things. When instead, black women are strong in service of themselves, that same strength, wisdom, and wit become evidence of our incompetence. Similar to how I wanted to share some words of wisdom from Clint himself, I will be including a video of a fantastic moment in black history right here just please don't click away you have to watch you have to watch tressie break this down go ahead and get into it 
their grievance, right? The depth of it. The reason why everybody's always like so surprised, like, why are they so angry with you? And I'm like, they're not angry about what I said. They're angry that I am, mm -hmm. right? Most, I mean, because of the way residential segregation works in our country and um, cultural segregation works in our country, very few people have ever had to deal with a black woman. And if they have, it is, it is not as an equal, it is as a subordinate. Right? And then the audacity to not just be their equal, but to be in the view of many people their superior drives them crazy. They have no way to relate to a black woman with any sense of authority that they themselves didn't grant me. So it's coming from other people to whom's authority they have to yield. And it sends them into an identity crisis. And because the problem must be, the problem can never be them, it has to be me. I embody the problem. Because they didn't feel that way. They didn't feel inferior to me until I showed up. Right? And so it must be that I am the problem. Um, that's how narcissism works. And I do think that there's something about privilege that generates narcissism. Um, and so, yes, they, they go crazy. And this is why this is part of that poor woman's problem. They are not angry with what I said. They're angry that I am. I hope you pick up Thick. It was a really great read that I would recommend. But I hope you enjoyed this video and, you know, look up Tressie. Follow her on Twitter because she be making people bad left, right, and center, okay? And you could tell from that video that you just watched. Um, so I'm sincerely grateful for your time, for sticking with it, and for watching. Till the next video.